<laughs> Who says goaltenders are superstitious, right? Here's a shot from the left wing side by Bluger over the Hawk net. Rides around to the right point. Bluger is there. Put it down the boards. Picked off by Dominic Kubalik of the Hawks. And he'll clear it down ice into the Penguin end. Here, Olivier Joseph between the circles. Passing it ahead for Bluger. This pass misses and goes all the way down. We get an icing call against Pittsburgh. Well, Johnny, who's hot, who's cold? Sponsored by Plumbers 911 Chicago. Visit plumbers911.com for emergency plumbing service. And I guess the guy who's hot, Dylan Strom, coming into this period. Six and one at the faceoff yeah. circle. And who's cold? Well, we're going to keep with the theme that we've been going with so far tonight. Calvin DeHaan blocking a lot of shots, a lot of ice bags, I would assume. So he's probably got a couple of cold <laughs> body parts as well. So I'm going to flip it a I little like bit. It. And, uh, I like it, Nick. Good correlation there. Nice segue. Now the Hawks have killed off all three Penguin power plays. They're back at full strength. Kirby Doc with the puck at center ice. will flip it off the left side glass and down in behind the Penguin net. John Marino digs it out there, clears to center ice. Eric Gustafson of the Hawks caught it with his skate, kicks it to a stick and flips the puck back into the Penguin zone. Here's Joseph carrying through center. Here, Olivier Joseph to the Hawk line, right wing side, where he'll stop and backhand it down the dasher behind the net. All five Hawks are back. Gustafson picks up the puck. Gustafson to center on the left wing, tried to shovel the puck into the Penguin zone and did, but Latang will now play the puck. Passing up ice, Brian Boyle over the Hawk line, long wrist shot into the shin pads of Seth Jones. And Kubalik will turn and bat the puck off the left wing boards into the Penguin zone. Taves racing in, first one to the dots in the pens end. Grabs the puck, carries behind the net, fed it through the crease. It slides through to the near circle. And Danton Heinen there for the Penguins. Got it ahead of Mike Matheson over the Hawk line to the left wing half boards. Put the puck through his legs now, there to get it. Heinen fed the right circle, Chris Letang. Here's Letang now, fed it to the slot off of Matheson's stick. Matheson got it back along the left boards, got the puck to Latang left point. Trying to shake the check of Jujar Kara, moves it over to Heinen, he shoots a one-timer, and Flurry was down to knock it away with the pads. Then Murphy put the puck off the glass, and up and over the glass it goes. Out of play, 2-0 Hawks, 14-31, left in period three. What a great push across oh. the crease as the Penguins move the puck from one side of the ice to the other. Marc-Andre Fleury traversing the crease from right to left as he came out aggressive. Riley Stillman in the area as well. And again, it's that dedication to defense, Johnny. That's the reason why the Hawks have been so good in their own end. And again, some sustained pressure for Pittsburgh. But again, the Hawks defending extremely well at their net front. Draw to Fleury's left. It's going to be Ryan Carpenter against Jeff Carter. Carter wins the draw to the right point. Taken there by Friedman. Moves it down. They score. And in front of the Hawk net, it was Jeff Carter redirecting this one past Marc-Andre Fleury. Unfortunately for Fleury, no shutout here tonight. And it's 2-1 in favor of the Hawks. Penguins fighting back. Well, you win a faceoff. And it's Jeff wow. Carter who was able to get on the other side of Seth Jones. Facing up ice was Jones and Jeff Carter able to just put a little slick little move to get on the other side, present his stick in a backhand fashion. I mean, that was all in one motion as well. And the heads up play by Jake Gensel just to sling that puck towards the net as Carter was able to present his backhand and deflect it. Right along the ice pass, Mark andre Fleury in Pittsburgh. You said it, Johnny, not going anywhere. 2-1 yeah. hockey game. For Carter, that's only his second goal on the season. And he's such a, a big guy and so rangy, he was able to use one hand to deflect that one past Fleury. So back in the Hawks zone, Patrick Kane will lose puck along the right boards. Backhands at the center ice. Kirby Dock at the Penguin line will grab it and fire it down the right side boards behind the net. It goes to the left wing side to Dabrinkit. Who was given a bump, lost the puck the other way, races Gensel into the Hawk zone, down the left wing to the half boards. Stopping there, he'll move back toward the point, and the puck to Matheson. Matheson fed the high slot, here's Russ with a shot, McCabe got in front of that. Now the puck is poked in behind the Hawk net by Latang, taken back by Murphy, and he'll send it off the left boards down to the Penguin line. Chris Letang there, hands it off to Kasperi, capping it over the Hawk line, down the left wing, stopping in the corner, fed it back to the high slot, Matheson with a drive, missed the Hawk net. Buck banks out to McCabe, put it around at the left wing side, it was intended for Dabrinkit, but Letang got there instead for the Penguins, and he'll send it down the boards behind the Hawk net. 
Stillman takes a handoff there from Fleury. Wraps it around up the right wing boards for Adam Gaudet. This is off his stick. Pens get it back. You seem, you seem to get a little, little bit of a shift in the momentum here. Penguins, they score that goal, and now they're just full of life. Kapanen, Hawk zone, passing high slot. Joseph to the right wing side. Here's a shot from Marino. Looked like Stillman might have blocked that. Loose puck in the near corner. Jones tried to poke it out of there. Jones will go the other way with a pass to Stillman back of the Hawk net. Stillman backhanding at the center ice, forcing the Pens to regroup. At the Penguin line, John Marino. Pierre Olivier Joseph does a little spin with the puck in his own end. Tops of the circles. Now he'll hand it off to Brock McGinn. Right wing center ice, front of the penalty boxes. Quick pass ahead now to Teddy Bluger. Avoids a hit and put the puck down the boards behind the Hawk net. Little scrum for the puck. Stillman battling in there, as is Ryan Carpenter. Huck rides free to Murphy, and he'll pass up the right side. Philip Kurashev at center ice. Tips it over the Penguin line off the boards to the right wing corner. Hardman finishing his check down against the end boards. That on Friedman, but Friedman is up on his feet, got to the puck. But a pass up the right side to McGinn. He'll deflect it down to the Hawk blue line. Connor Murphy there to get it back in the Hawk zone now. To Calvin DeHaan along the left wing boards. Put it out to Dominic Kubelik at center ice, but he was beaten to the puck by Matheson who clears it down into the Hawk end. The Han behind the net, put it around at the left wing now to Kubelik, spin it ahead into the Penguin zone. Matheson back to get it to Rust at center ice to Carter over the Hawk line down the left wing to the trailer. Rust then to Latang, who put it in front, and Rust fires the shot over the Hawk net. It looked like it deflected off of a Hawk player stick and out of play. 11.36 left in the third. It's now 2-1 in favor of the Hawks. This is Blackhawks Hockey on 720 WGN. Meet Caitlin and Adrian, a just-married couple that loves each other almost as much as I love windows. As a dedicated Pella window and door replacement advisor, I help guide them through our quality options and decide on the right choice for their style and budget. Right now, you can elevate the look of your home with special offers from Pella Indianapolis. Visit PellaIndianapolis.com slash radio to learn more. Fall is the most birthday-packed season of the year, so chances are you have a few celebrations coming up. Make sure your friends and family feel special with a gorgeous bouquet of roses from 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to send the perfect gift. 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99. To get 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash audio. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash audio. Want to grab hold of some power? Real power? Then stop at Northern Tool and pick up a cordless Milwaukee power tool featuring best-in-class M12 or M18 fuel technology. So you can drill, cut, nail, or grind it like nobody's business. Milwaukee power tools really pack a punch and are built to get the job done, period. Visit our store or buy online and pick it up curbside. Northern Tool and Equipment. Quality tools for serious work. The lady who's working hard to enrich your life, Anna DeVlantis, weekdays 1 to 4. Now, back to the game. John Weideman along with Ricky Olchek. Excuse me, Nick Olchek. I knew I was going to do that at least once. That's okay. That's your my uncle. uncle. It's okay. Seattle's not too far from here. It's okay. <laughs> well, Ricky is the assistant general manager of the Seattle Kraken. I must correct myself. And his nephew, Nick, is an outstanding color man here. Now at the National Hockey League level, and he's done work in the collegiate ranks. And he's a very busy guy. He told me off the air he had five different jobs, folks. <laughs> and I thought at one time in my life I was busy, yeah. and I had three. Yeah. Like you beat me by a couple there, man. Yeah, wow. It helps when you're not paying rent when you're living at home. So. <laughs> Stay there as long as you can. Just try not to get kicked out. That's all. Just keep saving those shickles. You're going to need to buy a house at some point. <laughs> Always helps out when Dad can pay the bill for a while. Oh, yeah. Now back in the Hawk zone. Connor Murphy bumped off the puck. It lays in the left wing circle. Taves with a poke check right onto Carter stick. Put it back to the line to Marino. Marino right point. Lost the puck down the boards. Kubelik put a shoulder into Carter. Carter took exception to that. And Carter putting the shaft of his stick on Dominic Kubelik. Now the puck pops out. Carter right circle. Stripped of the puck by Dominic Kubelik. No goals in seven games. 
Kubalik then one hands the puck over the Penguin blue line. Joseph back to get it. He'll carry in behind his net and leave it back there for Chris Letang. Penguins on the line change. That was some great work ethic too. Dominic Kubalik with a Pittsburgh Penguin draped all over his back. The ability to get to the red line, dump it in. That's what the Hawks are trying to do. Just kill the clock. And a nice play by Kubalik. I like how the Hawks are challenging at their blue line instead of allowing, you know, a free flow of their opponent into the Hawk zone. They're standing up at the blue line, and that includes the forwards. They're getting involved as well. Debrinket sent a pass across the rink intended for Patrick Kane, and this deflects into the Pittsburgh bench. Real quick, we want to mention Troy Murray is listening right now. We love you, bud, and uh, so good of you to tune us in. Hope you're doing well, and uh, want to see you back here in the booth as soon as possible. It was so great when he came to visit that one time last week. And... uh, just love you, bud. Take care of yourself, and we'll talk to you soon. Couldn't be more thankful for you, Troy, allowing me to sit in your throne. Not your chair, your throne. <laughs> and, uh, look, you mean so much to so many people, and before you know it, you'll be back here calling games. We love you, and hopefully listening is making you feel a little bit better. By the way, he's got the crown with him. So, <laughs> rightfully so, rightfully so. Yeah. And I don't know what happened to the cape, but it's around here somewhere. In behind. He's getting the cape dry clean. So yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Rinka takes the puck away. Penguin zone to Doc. Feather right circle. Kane to the high slot. Jones one timer. Deflects down in on goal. And a nice save there made by Jari. He had to scramble a bit. The other way comes Kapanen through center ice. Over the Hawk line. Down the right wing. Wipes it in on goal. Big save made by Flurry with the stick. Loose puck beside the net. Flurry now has to plop on it with a glove. And now one of the Penguins was trying to poke that puck into the short side, and the Hawks took exception. Get a little pile up to the right of the Hawk net on the goal line. And that was Evan Rodriguez. I'm not actually not surprised by that because Rodriguez is a tenacious hockey player and a terrific work ethic. But the linesmen have restored order. Yeah, relentless is the word that comes to mind. Great defensive play, two block, and the shot comes all the way 200 feet the other way and forces a save. All right, 9.42 left in the third. It's 2-1 Hawks. This is Blackhawks Hockey on 720 WGN. Chicago News on WGN. Current, local, agenda-free. It came on a night like any other. With power unlike anything else on Earth. Using beyond advanced active ingredients like bicyclopyrum, Acuron GT post-emergence corn herbicide is here to annihilate tough weeds. Advanced technology, enhanced control. Talk to your Syngenta retailer about Acuron GT. Always read and follow label instructions. Hi, this is Terry Prince. I'm the acting director of the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs. We're taking the month of November to amplify our support of veterans through Operation Rising Spirit. And we're asking for your help by writing a note of appreciation to a veteran in one of our homes. You can easily do this by visiting our website at veterans.illinois.gov and click on Send a Vet a Message. We've seen how this small gesture brightens their day and lifts the spirits of our veterans. Jake and Christine knew they needed help renovating their dream home. As a Pella advisor, I make sure every step of getting new windows and doors is smooth, including setting you up with our Pella Care Guarantee. It covers everything from product to installation with some of the strongest warranties in the industry. Right now, you can elevate the look of your home with special offers from Pella Indianapolis. Visit PellaIndianapolis.com slash radio to learn more. What's up, everybody? Nick Costos here for my friends at the Bed River Sportsbook. Whether you're a fan of pro or college football, Bed Rivers offers you great odds and special promotions for all the big games. And with hockey and hoops in action, Bed Rivers is bringing back the always popular live profit boosts for each sport. Log in and you'll receive a 20% live profit boost on Wednesdays for pro basketball and Fridays for pro hockey all season long. Must be 21 and located in Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Back to the United Center. John Weideman along with Nick Olchek. The Chicago Blackhawks hockey. Joe Brand has escaped and headed downstairs to the WGN radio room. He will conduct 
proceedings there in the Bitcoin of America, Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. That's the new Blackhawks Central. Wherever Joe goes, that's Blackhawks Central. Uh, wherever so. he goes, the crowd follows as well. So, popular guy. <laughs> Joe does an outstanding job, by the way. He makes our lives so much easier. Yeah. Huh? I mean, just preparation, cutting clips, listening to what's going on in the morning. The lifeline of the uh, mm -hmm. lifeline of what we do. Little known fact about Joe, he's also the play by play voice of the Kane County Cougars. And he is an exceptional baseball broadcaster. So, bright future for young Joe Brand. Face off circle to the right of Fleury. Jeff Carter, along with Kirby Dock, a couple of number 77s will battle at the dot. Now they're ready. Dock wins this one. McCabe in the far corner. Hit, but put the puck behind the hawk net to Connor Murphy. Back hands it up the left wing to Brinkett, to Dock at the Hawk line, to Kane over the Penguin line, right point. Lost the puck for a moment off a of poke check from Latang, got it back, spins it to the right wing corner to Dock, to the Brinkett left corner, now to Dock in the left corner. Hustled from behind there by Carter, lost the puck to center ice. Penguins get it back, Mike Mathis in front of the benches, steps into the Hawk zone, left point. Bothered by Kane, who strips the puck away, moves it across the rink along the left wing boards to Alex to Brinkett. Outlet to Kane at center ice. He'll take the puck and drift back into the Hawk zone with it. And a headman pass for Doc Penguin line. He'll grab it and fire it down in on goal. Jari down with a butterfly save. Sweeps the puck behind the Penguin net. Chris Letang there. Hawks make a line change. Letang with a pass up ice. Picked off by Jujar Kara. And he'll snap it down the left wing boards deep into the Penguin end. Letang is first on the scene in the corner. Hit by Kara, but passes the puck up the left wing to Heinen. He clears to the Hawk line. Calvin Hahn took it there. Dehan tried to give it ahead to Kubalik, but Heinen bats the puck back into the Hawk zone, and Dehan will now sweep it over to Seth Jones. And a pass up the right wing for Kara. He was on the Blackhawks side of the center ice red stripe. This goes all the way down. Icing called against the Hawks. Well, speaking of him, Johnny, the first choice equipment player of the game for me has got to be Jujar Kara, which is sponsored by first choice equipment. Chicago's leader for Kubota, skid steers, excavators, and track loader. Visit firstchoiceequipment.com. Everything that he's done in this game, Donnie, not an easy task to be playing yeah. with Jonathan Taves and Dominic Kubelik. He's been rewarded with a goal, a couple of hits as well. I think he's been very impactful in this game at both ends of the ice. Now, he definitely brings that physical element to that line. We're going to get an icing call again against the Hawks. And that was spun all the way around and down by Seth Jones. Sometimes, you know, you, you get an icing you're charged with an icing after a long sequence of play and you're tired. What do you do? Take another icing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it just allows everybody to settle down and not have to skate and just get a couple extra breaths of air. Counting on your captain now to win a draw, in which he's been 60, almost 61% this year. He's been terrific yeah. at the faceoff that this year, just like he's been in his entire career. Hawks team faceoff win percentage hovers around the 50% mark. Without Jonathan Taves, that number's probably down around 40. Yeah. So... Good thing that Taves is back. It's great to see the captain at full measure. Now here's a pass now from Jones in the Hawk zone to head up the right wing intended for Dylan Strome. It skitters by him, but no icing call. In the near corner Penguin zone, John Marino passing up the left wing at center ice. Evan Rodriguez into the Hawk zone, stopping at the left point. Hit by Hardman, put the puck down to the left wing corner, however. Heinen there, sweeping it behind the net. Zucker to the right point, Friedman. A long shot from there, sails wide of the net. You saw Ricola now down behind the Hawk net. Hit by Mike Hardman against the inboards. Puck pops free to Murphy. Now Kurashev tried to pull it out of some feet, and he does. And send it back to the corner. Heinen took it there. Put it around. Rodriguez sends it right point. Friedman drives the puck. Just deflects down behind the Hawk net. And another scrum ensues. Here's Rodriguez, left corner to Latang, left point. He sent one toward the Hawk net, and it rolls in on Fleury, who kicks it away with a left pad. Stillman will fire it down. We're going to get icing again against the Hawks. That's a good play, Johnny. Look, he iced the puck. Yes, you're going to have to come back in your own zone, but at least you're able to get it out, not giving up another opportunity at your net front. So a nice play there for Riley Stillman. Allows his guys to get a little bit of a rest in their own zone. And now another big draw here for Dylan Strom, who's been really good at the faceoff yeah. dot here tonight. All happening in the circle to Fleury's left. Jeff Carter repositioning his teammates for the draw. Carter against Strom. The drop of the puck. 
And the Hawks get control. Murphy behind the net. Drives it around at the right side. Kershaw tried to deflect the puck out of the Hawks zone. Strom will bank it off the boards to center. Pens regroup. Latang sends Rust over the Hawk line on the right wing. He mishandled the puck. It bounces between the circles. Doc will put it up the right wing to Kane. From in front of the bench, he'll send it down the boards into the Penguin zone. No icing called as the Pens get it back. Latang with a pass out to center. The Hawk line picked off by McCabe in front of the Hawk line, and he'll spin it on the left wing for Kane. And from the Penguin blue line, Kane deflects it down behind the net. Then Jari shot the puck off the near corner shelf, and this one deflects up and over the glass and out of play. Something I've been really impressed with in this third period is the Blackhawks' ability to get pucks out of their zone. Yes, Pittsburgh has had some constant pressure in the offensive zone, but especially near their own blue line, they have made sure to take the measure of getting the puck out, whether it's a chip, a high flip. Mm -hmm. They have not turned the puck over at their blue line at all in this third period, and it's gone a long way with trying to preserve this lead. Doc against Boyle on the draw to the right of Tristan Jari. And now Doc's going to get tossed out of there. And Patrick Kane will step in and try his luck. Kane on the season, 33.33% in face-off win percentage. And now Drew O'Connor of the Penguins will head over to the Penn's bench and get a new piece of composite. We used to say lumber <laughs> back in the day. With how big he is, six foot three, a big guy. All he's yeah. got to do is lean on, and that thing could shatter. Oh, yeah. Drew O'Connor played his college hockey at Dartmouth. From the draw, in behind the Penguin net, Marino to the puck, moves it around for O'Connor. His headman pass misses everybody and sails down, and we're going to get icing now against the Penguins. Johnny, that lumber you speak of, it was a little less expensive than the sticks nowadays, oh, right? Do you think? I mean, man, you're looking at 300 over 300 oh. bucks for a stick, uh, uh, you know, top of the line stick these days. I mean, even with the hockey teams, the NHL teams buying the sticks in bulk, uh -huh. you would think you'd get a sizable discount, yeah. but those sticks are yeah. pretty pricey. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they get something. But right. My word. That'd be the business to get in if yeah. you're going to start a new oh, exactly. business. Exactly. Here's O'Connor out of the Penguin zone to center ice in the right wing, chipping the puck down the boards and into the area behind the Hawk net. Then he runs into Seth Jones. Jones fighting off the check but lost the puck. It's poked out in front. Look out. A backhand shot by Boyle. It's turned out of there by Fleury, who then plops on the puck and holds it. Whistle stopping play. And sometimes seemingly a harmless play like that can result in a goal if you're not paying attention. And a broken play. Nice play down low for Calvin DeHaan taking care of his man. That was Zach Aston Reese, and the puck just kind of popped free to the middle, and Kirby Doc just a step late to be able to get to that puck. But the savvy veteran Brian Boyle always knows the right spot to be in as he drifts the backhander on towards a well-positioned Marc-Andre Fleury. Draw to Fleury's left. It's going to be Taves against Teddy Bluger. And linesman holding the puck for just a second. We'll get into that story in just a minute about the linesman tonight. Pens win the draw. Matheson for the left point. Long shot. Fleury makes the save. Butterfly style. Kara pushes the puck to center ice. Here's Kubalik. In over the Penguin line. Left wing. Snaps the puck down to the corner. Kara tried to get to it. He was pumped away from the puck. Pens get it and come out of their end. Zucker into the Hawks zone. Winds his way into the left wing corner and fires a shot that deflects up into the protective netting. 5.36 left in the third. Hawks hanging on to a 2-1 to one lead over the Penguins. Can they hang on for the rest of regulation and close the deal? Find out after this break. You're listening to Blackhawks Hockey on 720 WGN. That's for you. Answer the call from patients who need plasma. Donations are down, so give plasma at a Griffles Center and receive compensation. Visit grifflesplasma.com. The beloved fairy tale Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella comes to the Paramount Theater. Enter to win a night out with me, Dean Richards, including a VIP meet and greet and two tickets to the show Sunday, November 21st. Visit wgnradio.com slash contests. For families with a sick child in the hospital, being together for the holidays is their biggest wish. With your help, Ronald McDonald House Charities of Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana can make that wish come true. With contributions like yours, we're able to give families a comfortable place to stay close by throughout their child's treatment. Please donate today at ronaldhousechicago.org wish. 
Together, we can be there through their toughest times and make their holiday a little more merry and bright. That's the sound of one of my favorite customers ever. His name's Jeremy. His dad, Frank, called me when it was time to replace their drafty old windows and to take advantage of our limited time sale. As a dedicated Pella advisor, I make getting new windows and doors simple. And when it comes to installation, nobody does it like Pella. Our local team can typically install in just a day. Right now, you can elevate the look of your home with special offers from Pella Indianapolis. Visit PellaIndianapolis.com slash radio to learn more. The Blackhawks, Wildcats, and the NFL play here on AM 720. On smart speakers, say play WGN Chicago. We're back to the United Center. John Weideman along with Nick Olchek for Chicago Blackhawks hockey. It's getting late. 2-1 in favor of the Hawks, and they got to find a way to hang on to that lead. You look at Captain Jonathan Taves at the faceoff dot, circle to the right of Flurry. He looks up at that scoreboard to see how much time is left, and you know what's going through his mind. Boys, we got to buckle down if we're going to preserve this win because the Penguins are giving it their all. Here's Stillman passing the puck to Kara. Center ice to Kubalik over the Penguin line. Wrist shot. Oh, that hit Friedman in the foot. He's down. Taves now put it in front. Kubalik, he shoots. He hit the post. Kubalik has just been snake bit here in the last little while. And now Friedman is going to hobble to the Penguin bench. Here's Rodriguez into the Hawk zone. Dropping the puck into the right wing corner for Kapanen. Bumped off the puck by Stillman. Puck knocked free now to Rodriguez. Back of the net. Stillman put a body into him. Stillman pucks the puck free along the near boards. Taken by Kapanen. Winds it down to Rodriguez. Back of the net. Sends it left point. Ricola. Back down the boards. He goes with the pass. Heinen behind the net. Fed it up the slot. Seth Jones with an alert stick. Pokes it free. Kept it at the right point, though, by Latang. And then a good play by Kubalik to reach him with a stick and poke the puck to center ice, forcing the Penguins to regroup. Latang into the Hawks zone. That play looked like, like it could have been offside. Dropped it off to Heinen, who fires from the left circle. Blocked by Seth Jones. Here's Mike Hardman with a breakaway over the Penguin line down the slot and shoots. And a blocker save is made by Tristan Jari. Hardman right on the loose puck in the center ice area. Into the Hawks zone. Gets it to Carter. He shoots and scores. Jeff Carter with a pair of goals here tonight has tied the score at two with 4.17 left in the third period. Well, Johnny, think about this sequence. Post for Dominic Kubelik, breakaway for Mike Hardman. Both don't find their way to the back of the net, and then a quick transition for the Pittsburgh Penguins. As Jeff Carter was on the back door, it looks like the officials are going to gather at the timekeeper's box to see. Now, I think the thing that they're probably going to look at here is to see, did the net come off? Was it pushed off by Fleury? Regardless, we'll have to wait and see, but just a crazy segment. As the Hawks had a couple of chances, and the Pittsburgh Penguins come down the other way, and seemingly, as of right now, are able to convert. That net was off as that puck crossed the goal line, but I think the question is going to be... Let's go. Play is under review. To determine if the puck went between the goalposts. So what they're trying to review is whether or not that puck would have gone through the area that would be between the goalposts if the net was off. So where the moorings are, if that puck went inside one of the moorings, it's going to be a goal because Flurry was the one that pushed it off its moorings. He was coming across from right to left at about a thousand miles an hour, and that bottom leg, the left, or the right leg rather, yeah. of Mark Andre Flurry just kicks that net off. I mean, it is a really close play as we're getting a couple of looks at it. And man, oh man, is that ever close? I mean, from that look, Johnny, I think it's a goal. I do too. I, I would say it's a goal, and we're going to get the call here. After, after video review was determined, the puck entered the regular position of the goal. Therefore, we have a good goal. Well, that call, as you can tell, not real popular with the folks who are inhabiting the United Center here tonight, but that just means that the Blackhawks are going to set up these great fans for... Just an awesome comeback and an unforgettable finish. Yeah, just under five minutes. And look, I mean, Pittsburgh has come out flying and firing since the opening puck drop of this third period. And the Hawks were able to keep him at bay for the most of that period. A couple of good chances for Carter, and he's able to tie it up. Now to break it down, the left wing into the Penguin zone. Tosses the puck in front for Kane. That was batted away by Joseph. 
Here are the Penguins the other way. Zucker at center ice. Feeds it ahead McGinn over the hawk line to Joseph. Left circle. Shoots in and out of the glove of Fleury. Murphy right there on the loose puck will clear it down ice to the Penguin blue line. Gensel picks up the assist on the Carter goal. Gensel's assisted on both Carter's goals. Zucker firing from the right circle. Over the hawk net off the glass. Zucker got it back. Here's Zucker along the right side boards. A native of Las Vegas. Put it into the deep slot. A shot there from Marino. That deflects wide of the hawk net. Marino now at the right point. Fed it over to the left circle. Connor Murphy with a timely poke check. That's the puck down to the Penguin blue line. Joseph is there. Shot it across the rink. This bounces to Calvin to Hawn Hawk line. Head to Ryan Carpenter. Penguin line. And he'll deflect it down ice. And down in behind the Penguin net. Kurashev and Marino battle there. Gershev knocks the puck into the Penguin crease, and Jari will plop on it and hold it as Ryan Carpenter was trying to fish it out of there. Whistle stopping play. 3-11 now left in the third. Tied up at two. By the way, I want to mention something. I, I did say that uh, you've got two brothers linesing this game tonight for what it's worth, Travis Garlitz and Brandon Garlitz. This is not the first time they've done it. I was handed a note. And good job by Curtis Koch on the research. This is like the third or fourth game that they've worked together at the National Hockey League level. So that's kind of cool. Oh, very. I'm sure every each and every game that they do together is all the more special to be able to work in the greatest league in the world with your brother, yeah. Johnny. I mean, man, oh, man, that's got to be one heck of a feeling for both of them. Now here are the Penguins on the attack. This is a set play. Gensel fires it off the right corner glass. Hawk zone. Pens are first to the dots, and they're getting the icing. Russ fires. That's wide. Loose puck on the high slot. Matheson's got it. Matheson rolls into the right circle. Turns to the boards. Sets up Latang at the line. Back to Matheson. Drives a shot from the right point to miss the net. Gensel tries to feed the puck in front. Picked off by Calvin DeHaan. He'll clear it down ice into the Penguin zone. No icing call. Hawks will get a line change. Chris Latang's got the puck in the circle to the left of Jari. Moves it up the left wing. Danton Heinen over the Hawk blue line. He shovels it down in front of the net. Picked off by McKay. Banks a pass up the left wing to Brinkett. Penguin line. He'll backhand the puck down behind the net. Jari out to handle it there. Put the puck along the near boards. Marino will lift it through to center ice. Grabbed by McKay with a glove. Dropped it to a stick and then sent it ahead for Jujar Kara. Who then ends up taking the puck back to the Hawk line and drops it back to Connor Murphy in the Hawk zone. Hawks regroup. Murphy between the circles. He'll drop it off to McCabe. Center ice on the left wing, then back over to Murphy. Then a pass ahead for Kara. He didn't touch it as it came by, and it goes all the way down for icing against the Hawks. You could see, Johnny, once that puck went right past Jujar Kara, Connor Murphy just kind of put his arms up. He was expecting Kara there on that blue line to be able to present his stick and just redirect that puck in so that way it wouldn't be icing. Because Murphy made that pass on his side of the red line. Wasn't the case. Terra just let it go. Yeah. All of a sudden, now the Blackhawks with a big defensive zone draw to the left of Marc-Andre Fleury. And it's Taves against Carter. Carter with a pair of goals here tonight. Came into the game with only one on the season. Draw one by the Pens. Latang right point. Put it down the boards. Here's Gensel rolling through the high slot. Long shot through a screen. Big save made by Fleury down in the butterfly position. Carter creating havoc in front of the Hawk net as the puck is spun to the left wing corner. Taken by Gensel. Gensel with a wraparound try. Knocked away with a stick save from Fleury. And that puck fled over the blue line to center ice. This should be an offside call, but they let him play. Here's a shot now from Latang from the left point. You heard it ring off the post. Loose puck at the right point. Matheson got it over Latang. Hammers one for the left point. Blocked by Jujar Kara. The Hawks carries the center ice and clears it off the boards and down. 118 left on the clock for regulation. Mike Matheson with the puck back of the Penguin net. Matheson strokes a pass ahead that misses Zucker and goes all the way down. And now we're going to get icing against Pittsburgh. Taves had just made his way to the Hawks bench. Getting a breather right now, so... I don't believe he'll be available for this next face-off unless head coach Derek King decides to use his timeout. They've got an opportunity here to run a face-off play. Kirby, Doc, and Patrick Kane talking on the board side, the far side where Kane is lined up. We'll see if the Hawks try and run a play here, but it all is incumbent on Kirby, Doc, winning this draw. Doc against Teddy Bluger on the draw, circle to the left of Jari. And the draw goes to Matheson, who leaves it behind the Penns net. 
Marino spins it around at the right side. McGinn at center ice. Hands it off to Bluger over the Hawk line. A long snapshot from the high slot. And an Ealing butterfly save made by Fleury. Here's DeHaan chased out behind the Hawk net. He'll move up the left wing side. And just short of the Hawk line, he pulls out the 60-degree wedge and lifts that one through the air to the Penguin line. Doc jumped up to try and glove it and drop it to a stick, and he ends up losing his footing and the puck. The other way come the Pens McGinn into the Hawk zone. Works his way down the slot. That puck's in the skates of McCabe. Doc alertly back to pull it out of there. And then banks a pass up the left wing to bring it at center ice. And he'll carry back in the Hawks zone, allowing the Hawks to complete their line change. 20 seconds left in regulation. Taves takes a pass from Murphy over the Penguin line down the left wing. Taves fighting through a check-in behind the Penguin net. That from Marino. 12 seconds left in regulation. Kara in to try and scrape it out. Carter ends up with the puck. He'll turn and carry back the other way up the right wing side. Rink wide pass now to Joseph in over the Hawk line. Left wing side with a wrist shot. In and out of the glove of Furry. Rebound shot by Russes over the net as the horn sounds ending regulation. And for the second straight game, the Hawks are going to overtime here on home ice. Oh, one heck of an ending. A flurry of chances. Original shot stop by the glove of Flurry, and then Brian Rust. Right down Broadway with a great opportunity. Linky just put it up and over the net as Flurry went down to his right side of his body in a little bit of a windmill type of play with the legs. And somehow, Johnny, that puck's able mm -hmm. to stay out of the back of the net, and we're headed to overtime. Well, the Hawks were outshot in the hockey game 42-31. to 31. They were outshot in the third period, Nick, 20-5. to 5. Yeah. Kind of a bad trend. Yeah, look, I mean, that was one thing that Corey Stillman had spoke about in our second period intermission. He said he knew Pittsburgh was going to come out, and they did that. I mean, to a T. I mean, they were by far and away the more aggressive team in that third period but an opportunity here for the blackhawks to try and find a way to get that extra point in overtime most mm -hmm. exciting part in hockey for me the new three on three i mean in new in terms of the history of the nhl i think it was one of the best things that they could have put into the game very very exciting and again the hawks were able to hold on and get a point try and get that second one here in ot and with the point they now have seven on the season if you can believe it nick Right now, they're only two points behind the Colorado Avalanche, who, after pretty much handing the Blackhawks a humiliating loss on the opening night of the season out in Denver, have played just so-so. In fact, some would say they've played bad. Right? They've been affected by the COVID situation for sure. But Colorado right now in sixth place in the Central Division at the start of business here tonight. We'll see where it all ends up after this one. Yeah, but. and you can say that for a lot of, quote, really good teams this year. I mean, Vegas is playing 500 mm -hmm. hockey, and you know, there have been a couple of teams that have really struggled out of the gate, and I think that's a great thing for the Blackhawks, right? They, they've been, yeah. obviously, the struggles have been well documented, but they can string together a couple games where they get some wins, they get some points. Hey, at least you got a point bank tonight. Right. Yes, you would have liked two. Opportunity to get two here in the overtime, but certainly... Very, very far from the season being over with so much hockey left to play. You contrast that with the start of the Minnesota Wild, who right now are 8-3-0 for 16 points at the top of the Central Division. Nobody saw that coming. Oh. They got a good young team there, especially they do. With that Kaprizov guy. He's a Boy. heck of a player. All right, the Hawks are going to go with Kane, Debrinkin, and Seth Jones. Same trio that started the game against Nashville, but the Penguins win the draw. Carter put it back into the Penguin zone to Latang to Jake Gensel, left wing center ice. He'll hand it there to Latang. Back hands it across to Gensel. He'll carry it across the center ice area and in over the Hawk line down the left wing. Gensel behind the Hawk net, rolls around to the right circle, sets up Carter, high slot. Drops it back to Gensel, left point. Racing down the left wing, Gensel now pushed to the end boards by Debrinket, who strips the puck away. Then Debrinket put it ahead to Kane, a two-on-one in overtime with Jones. Kane in over the Penguin line, right wing to the trailer, Debrinket, he shoots! Oh, Jari just got the end of his glove on that shot, deflecting it up into the protected netting. The Cat was going for a pair of overtime Ws. And set up by Patrick Kane and... I think Tristan Jury was expecting Johnny maybe Cap to give it back to Patrick Kane as he had his head up. He was watching Kane the whole way. Love that play from Alex Debrink, and he kept his eyes on Kane. He was lying with his eyes. He was his eyes were saying pass, and he ends up shooting. And Jari just able to get a piece of it with the top of the glove. Oh man, that, that's the cheater portion of the glove, by the way. That's near the wrist. 
So bottom line is he made the save. Hawks control off the draw. Murphy in the left wing circle. Carries the puck and drops it in the high slot. Jonathan Taves. He'll shoot from the left circle. That's over the net, around the glass. And here come the Penguins the other way, led by Bluger. Bluger to center ice on the left wing. Sent the puck across the rink. John Marino in front of the Hawks bench to Bluger. And he passes the puck to himself along the right boards at the Penguin blue line. Bluger out to center ice. Hands the puck off to Brian Rust. The Golden Domer racing into the Hawks zone down the left wing, turning to the half boards. Dropping it down to the corner, Evan Rodriguez to the high slot now, Mike Matheson down the left wing, put it in front of the Hawk net, deflects off the stick of rust away to the left wing boards, and Taves has the puck, he'll send it on the right wing, Murphy over the Pittsburgh line, down the right wing. He was jostled off the puck by Matheson, lost it, the Penguins get it, and carrying out of the Penguin zone, Evan Rodriguez. He's through center ice and over the Hawk blue line, Rodriguez twisting with the puck to the left wing boards. Decides to send it back into his own end to his goaltender, Jari, who laid the paddle of his stick down between the circles to stop that puck and hand it off to Marino back of the net. Quick pass up the left wing, Rodriguez in over the Hawk line, cuts through the high slot and shoots, and that's wide of the Hawk net. Puck rides around it to break it along the right boards, outlets to Kane at center ice. Marino came along and poked that off of Kane's stick, and the Penguins get it back. Here's a pass now, ahead to Bluger, in over the Hawk line, right wing. He tried to get a shot away from the right circle. Jones poke checks it away, and then stabs the puck out to center ice, but the Pens get it back. Marino passing to Kapanen over the Hawk line. Kapanen turning at the top of the right circle, will carry the puck back to center ice, then loop back into the Hawk zone. Kapanen right circle, lost the puck as Jones poke checks it away. Bluger put it in front, Latang fires, big save made by Flurry. Jones, a bank pass to Brick and a two-on-one Brick with Kane. Back to the Brick and the Kane. He shoots on blocker. Save is made by Jari. An uncontested two-on-o breakaway, and the Hawks could not convert. One of the Penguin players is down on the ice, and the Hawk in. That's Kapanen. We're going to get an icing call here against the Penguins. Kasperi Kapanen was crawling to the Penguin bench from deep in the Hawk zone. And Jeff Carter out now pleading with the linesman. What are you talking about? You should have blown that whistle a long time ago. And Kane, I stand corrected, folks. Kane hit the crossbar with his shot. I thought Jerry got the blocker on. Oh, it was a two-on-o oh. from the Penguins' blue line in. One pass, two pass, three pass, four. Oh. And then Kane right off the post. He couldn't hit him more square, Johnny. Mm. You don't see that very often. Uncontested two-on-o, but in three-on-three. Had a couple of Penguins. Well, all the Penguins caught up the ice. And an unbelievable chance gone by the wayside. And it looks mm-hmm. like the official's going over to pick up the skate blade. That's why Kapanen couldn't get back to the bench because he was completely missing gotcha. the skate blade. And he just had nothing to push off of. And kind of like a dog on a hardwood floor. You just can't do anything when you're <laughs> when you're sitting there without a skate blade and you're just trying to go mm-hmm. off of some plastic. Well, this game, <clears throat> excuse me, this game does not feature Sidney Crosby or Yevgeny Malkin, both unavailable to the Penguins. Malkin still hasn't recovered from his injury, and Crosby is in COVID protocol. Imagine this overtime with those two playing. All right, Doc back between the circles. Hawk zone will start up. Kirby Doc through center. Put it in over the Penguin line. Has it right point. Fed it high slot Jones. He'll have to carry back to center ice as he's forced out there by by, uh, Carter. Jones drops it to Doc over the Penguin line. Drops it right point. Taves cuts through the slot to... Doc now left corner to Taves along the left boards. Down to Doc left wing corner again. Taves goes to the bench. Doc to Murphy high slot. He'll work it down to the left wing corner. Debrinkit steps onto the ice. Murphy left wing corner moving up the boards. Feeds it to Kane in the high slot. He'll drop it back to center ice to Debrinkit and the Hawks will reset. 120 in overtime. Debrinkit to Kane. Over the Penguin line. Down the right wing. Stopping in the circle. Fends off a check. Kane got free in the slot to Debrinkit. Left circle, tried to feed it in front, picked off by the pins. Here's Gensel the other way, two on two with Carter in over the hawk line. Gensel from the right circle, fires, and Flurry is down with a butterfly save. Oh, and then he gave a stick to Jeff Carter, and Carter gave a stick back to Flurry, and now Flurry used his left arm to headlock Jeff Carter out of there. We get a pile up behind the net. Connor Murphy has one of the Penguins down on the ice. That's Gensel, and the linesmen jump in and intervene. Flurry jabbed Carter first, and then Carter countered. 
And Flurry took exception to that. It was actually Jake Gensel. Oh, no, I stand corrected. Yeah. Carter chopped the glove of yep. Mark Andre Flurry. That's why he took exception. Yeah, it was the original shot, and Jake Gensel following it up, and then Carter, who did a little flyby on the net, came back. And you're right, I mean, just a two-hand slash right on the glove of Mark Andre Flurry. I think if this is an overtime, maybe a penalty is called. Yeah, and possibly. Flurry, yeah, I mean, Mark Andre Flurry, he's a. Guy who's going to stand up for himself and gave it right back to Jeff Carter. Penalties assessed. Chicago number 77. Two minute slashing. Two minute slashing. Wow. So I believe we got matching minor penalties. Carter receives a two minute minor for slashing, as did Marc Andre Fleury. So somebody from the Blackhawks, I believe, is going to go across and serve this penalty. We haven't seen anybody yet. It's going to be Connor Murphy that's going to serve the penalty. So the sides remain three aside, matching minors. Great call made. Yeah. Great call made. 102 left in overtime. Here's Jones off the draw. He'll lead the rush up the left wing to center ice with lots of speed over the Penguin line. Stops, cuts in front. Got it to Kara beside the net. Now to Taves, high slot. Here's Taves with the puck rolling into the left wing circle. Taves now carrying behind the Penguin Nets. They're looking for his first Blackhawk goal of the year to knock high slot. To Jones, he'll fire from the bottom of the left circle. And this ends up in behind the net. Picked up in the near corner by the Penguins. Matheson back through center ice and over the Hawk line left wing. Cuts across the high slot. Matheson rolling to the line. Lost the puck. Kirby Dock pokes it to center ice, but Matheson doubling back took it away. Quick pass to, the, to Rodriguez at center ice. He got it ahead, Brian Rust over the Hawk line. 15 seconds, Rust, a drop pass. Matheson, left wing circle. Turning away to the boards, then to the point. Matheson cutting across the high slot. Drops the shoulder, lost the puck. Jones has it the other way with four seconds left. Jones, headman pass, Kane with two one game shoots. Oh, and a big save is made by Jari just as time elapses in overtime. Patrick Kane had an opportunity to win it there. He didn't run out of time. He got the shot away. But old Jari just got enough of that to knock it wide. Wow. What, oh. what an overtime. At the buzzer. Seth Jones just putting it right into an area oh. where Patrick Kane could skate into it. And he loves when he's going to shoot the puck, Johnny. He loves that low blocker shot right in between the blocker and the pad. It's about three inches high, two inches wide. And he just couldn't hit the mark as Jari was able to parry it away with the blocker. So the overtime leads to no scoring. Shots on goal. I think this is unofficial right now because they're giving two shots to the Penguins to one for the Hawks. And I think we saw more than oh, that. I they just agree. haven't put them on the board. Yep. But uh, the shot totals unofficially now are 44 favor the Penguins to 32 for the Hawks. And that's regulation and overtime added up. So now we go to the shootout. And for the Blackhawks, this is their first foray into the shootout this season. Pittsburgh's got some guys that uh, are pretty good in shootout, but they're, as I said, they're missing Crosby and Malkin. The Hawks are going to counter, of course, with Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. That's almost automatic. I think a shootout victory for the Hawks would be a, a real boon for them after they worked so hard. They took a 2 to nothing lead in this game and saw Jeff Carter tie it up for Pittsburgh with both goals for the Penguins here tonight. Uh, we'll see what happens in the shootout, and the Hawks are going to take the first shot. It's going to be Jonathan Taves. So Taves back in the Hawks zone. He's ready to go in his career. 50 for 101. Pretty darn good. He's ready. He picks up the puck at center ice. Carries it in over the Penguin line. Taves down the slot. Deeks and shoots. He scores! A backhander right through the five hole on Jerry. Hawks lead 1-0 in the shootout. Plenty of speed for Jonathan Taves. A little back forehand, backhand right between the legs of Jari. And the Hawks take the lead in the shootout. Now for the Penguins, this is Jake Gensel. Gensel, one of the craftier shooters for the Penguins, has the puck at center ice. Carries over the Hawk line on the left wing, not fast, cuts back through the slot, shoots, and a glove save made by Fleury! So still, 
one nothing Hawks in the shootout. And here's Patrick Kane. Listen to this crowd. They haven't been this enthusiastic in a long time. Kane picks it up at center ice. Carries over the Penguin line to the left wing circle. Deeks and shoots. And Jari makes the glove save. But the Hawks still have the lead in the shootout. Well, Johnny, now it's going to be Chris Letang. He's had a great career in the shootouts. Watch for him to go forehand, backhand, top shelf. That's the move he's been making yep. throughout his whole career. Letang picks up the puck at center ice. Carries over the Hawk line on the left wing. Cuts back to the left circle, then to the side and shoots. And Fleury down with a butterfly save. So it's all up to the Cat. If he scores here, the Hawks will win it in the shootout. Alex Debrinkit. Three for ten in his career in the shootout, but he can win it here. Debrinkit picks up the puck at center ice. Carries over the Penguin line. Twisting down the slot for the win. Shoots, he scores! Hawks win! Hawks win! It took him to the shootout, but they beat the Pittsburgh Penguins here tonight. They win the shootout two to nothing. And they win the hockey game three to two. And once again, the cat is the hero. Snapped it off the underneath side of the crossbar, past Jari into the penguin net. The night is over. The Hawks have won two in a row. And boy, the enthusiasm of this hockey team is palpable. You can feel it right up here. Uh, just an explosion of energy and not too much fancy stuff there from Alex Kaprinkin. Plenty of speed, middle of the ice, kept that puck in the shooting position the whole way, forcing Jari to have to try and think when he's going to release that puck off of his stick. Just a quick shot. And Johnny, you could see the glove of Tristan Jari was really low. That's a great read from Alex to bring it. The glove almost Velcroed to the pad, and he sees that whole top shelf open on the right side. And Alex Debrinkit gives the Hawks the extra point. And how about the saves, Mark andre Fleury? <laughs> he only had to face two shooters, yeah. but he made some difficult saves there. He did. He did. I mean, he was always square of the shot and in a shootout position. When you're going one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, you want to make the goalie make the first move. Well, Mark andre Fleury made the shooters make the first move. He was absolutely brilliant. Let's pick up the three stars. Pittsburgh, number 77, Jeff Carter. Carter gets the number three star. That's a good choice. The number two star of the game from the Blackhawks, number 29, Mark Andre Fleury. And this has to feel good for him. He got shellacked in Pittsburgh, and that was a tough night for him, but he redeemed himself here tonight. Star of the game from the Blackhawks, number four, Seth Jones. Seth Jones, the number one star here tonight, scored his first Blackhawks goal to give the Hawks a two to nothing lead about three quarters of the way through the second period. And he's our number one star here tonight. Final score in the shootout. It's the Hawks 3 and the Penguins 2. Nick and I will be back with more right after this. You're listening to Blackhawks Hockey on 720 WGN. Bring your pet to Tree Time Christmas Creations in Lake Barrington to meet me, Steve Dale. Saturday, November 13th, 1 to 3. Get advice, pet photos with Santa and Mrs. Claus. A portion of sales goes to Paw Chicago Foundation. Visit WGNRadio.com slash events. Caitlin and Adrian, a just married couple that loves each other almost as much as I love windows. As a dedicated Pella window and door replacement advisor, I help guide them through our quality options and decide on the right choice for their style and budget. Right now, you can elevate the look of your home with special offers from Pella Indianapolis. Visit PellaIndianapolis.com slash radio to learn more. Fall is a season of gathering that brings us together with warmth and color. So whether it's a birthday, anniversary, or a special event, celebrate your friends and family with a gorgeous bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to find your reason and brighten someone's day with exclusive offers and great values on bouquets and arrangements. To order today, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash audio. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash audio. Bob Surratt. That old DJ is worth listening to. Bob Surratt, start your day. Back to the United Center, along with Nick Olchek and Joe Brand. I'm John Whiteman. Happy to be telling you that the Blackhawks won tonight in the shootout. We are up here in the neighborhood, high above Section 318. Neighborhood emptying out, and all our neighbors are headed home. They all had smiles on their faces. I saw fist bumps and high fives, even a couple of hugs. 
And it was great to see if you're a Chicago Blackhawk fan and you see this kind of thing take place inside your building where the team entered the game the other night against Nashville with a record of 1-9-2 and two with a new head coach. And Derek King so far has got the answer for the Blackhawks because that's two games, two wins. He's been perfect, Johnny. And, I mean, look, the guys have come out. They've played confident. They've played for each other. That's the quote you hear a lot that players would say is let's play for each other. They've played for him. And they played for the fans. How about the turnout tonight, Ed? Awesome turnout from the fans, and you had said it in that overtime period. The noise was incredible, probably the loudest we've heard the United Center. And I, I should say the Blackhawks' victory tonight is sponsored by VictoryAutoRecords.com. Victory Auto Records, the old car is worth money. Um, but you're, you're totally right. It's an awesome win for the Blackhawks. They've strung two wins now together. See if they can keep that going later on in the week. Yeah, Arizona comes in here in a couple of nights. Arizona's had some hard luck this year. You look at their record, one 10 and 1 so far and then just like the Blackhawks they had their struggles but uh, they appear to be possibly turning things around we'll have to see by the time they get there but regardless of who the opponent is the Blackhawks have got to maintain that pace that they've had here tonight well, because when they play with that kind of pace they're so much more effective and of course when you go in and you start playing another team you're going to go through different pre-scouts but I think the key for the Blackhawks right now has to be let's worry about ourselves that's plenty of good things to build off of. I thought they were the better team through 40 minutes. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, they had a letdown in the third period. And you have to give credit to the Pittsburgh Penguins because they just came out firing early and often. But a lot of great things. How about the defensemen and the block shots in this game? I mean, there is going to be plenty of Absolutely. ice bags going around the room. We talked about it all night long, but that was one of the big keys to this game. If you don't block all those shots, it makes Mark andre Fleury's life a lot more tough. And who knows, maybe the Penguins score another couple of goals. So I thought defending overall was a real strong point. Well, we got to move it along, but I uh, want to thanks Nick Olchek tonight for doing the color commentary here tonight, folks. He's so much like his dad, it's scary. <laughs> and on top of being a great color guy, he's just a great person. So uh, thanks to Nick, and let's do this again real soon. John, thank you so much, man. You make my life so easy, and I uh, grew up listening to you, and now we get to do it. And a big thanks to Troy Murray again for giving Absolutely. me this opportunity, giving me the blessing. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Make sure you give the dogs an extra milk bone. Oh, uh, well, I'll give them two. How about that? <laughs> each, two each. <laughs> that works. Special thanks to our Hall of Fame engineer. You know I'm talking about Paul Zarang here. Give me some. Oh, yeah, Paul Zarang. Great job by you. Big thanks to the hardworking crew at our flagship station tonight, led by the varsity. Brett Jackson, along with Jimmy Nash, the Nash, and Connor McKnight. Great work, one and all there. Thanks as well to the Blackhawk fans, the best fans in hockey. Those of you that came down here tonight, please drive safely on your way home, and we'll see you back here in a couple of nights when the Blackhawks take on the Arizona Coyotes. We save our final thanks of the night for our good friend Joe Brand. He got us through Blackhawk Central pregame, through the intermissions. He's going to get you home in the Bitcoin of America, Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. One more time, that final score was the Hawks 3 and the Penguins 2 in shootout. For everybody I mentioned, I'm John Weideman from the United Center here on Chicago's West Side saying thanks for tuning in. This has been Blackhawks Hockey on 720 WGN. Joe's got your postgame activities. Let's get it to him right now. Kershaw took it away, got it to Kane, he shoots, he scores! Patrick Kane! Hey, hey, hey. It's time for the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show on the Blackhawks radio network. Let's go Blackhawks! Here's Joe Brand. Well, I believe they call that a winning streak. Back-to-back wins for the Blackhawks as they take down the Pittsburgh Penguins here tonight at the United Center. 3-2 to two in the shootout. It's the second straight win for the Hawks after taking down Nashville Sunday night in overtime. Chicago Blackhawks now 3-9-2, and two, taking down the Pittsburgh Penguins, who dropped to 4-3-4. and four. I'm Joe Brand. This is the Bitcoin of America, Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. You're listening to 720 WGN Radio. And one other note, since Derek King has taken over as head coach of the Chicago Blackhawks, they have not trailed in one period. Blackhawks take down Pittsburgh tonight. They get some redemption against the team that beat them earlier this year. They help out their teammate, Marc-Andre Fleury, who did not have that great of an outing the last time he faced his former team, but a whole different feel for the Hawks as they take down Pittsburgh tonight. Let's head back up to the booth up at the United Center. Nick Olchek doing a fantastic job once again, stepping in for Troy Murray. And 
just like his pops, but still with a little <laughs> bit of his own personality, too. I loved what you said about Kapanen down on the ice, looking like a dog on the hardwood. I think we broke the record for dog references in this broadcast tonight. Oh, Joe, man, it's, uh, it was a heck of a game to, uh, to call. And, yeah, of course, we're, we're all fans of dogs and cats, all different pets around here. But, uh, yeah, just, it was a dog type of game. And let me look, it was a dogged effort from the Blackhawks. I don't think there's any question about it. A great first and second period and you got to give credit to the Pittsburgh Penguins they had one heck of a a third and they really came out and tested the Blackhawks from the opening puck drop and the veteran savvy veteran Jeff Carter took over that period tied the game with two goals and and then eventually the Blackhawks won in a shootout but just a really really great game all the way around if you bought a ticket today Joe uh, you were entertained Nick we are uh, pleased to be joined by Kirby Doc here downstairs and Kirby that third period was very back and forth, and uh, something that this team has str had struggled with in the past is letting leads get slipped away and letting that snowball build. That didn't happen in this third period. How come? Yeah, um, I think we need to do a better job, honestly, of, uh, of not sitting back too much. And when we're going into the third at home, uh, kind of in control of the game and let two goals go in, and uh, we got to find a way to get better at that. But like you said, we didn't squander the lead and let them come back and get a lead on us then chase the rest of the game so we found a way to to grit it out and get a gutsy win at home well kirby uh, a lot of great defensive plays from you today in your own zone providing that back pressure on the back check is that a sort of a point of emphasis where you can kind of separate yourself from some other guys where of course we know the offensive flair that you do carry but just talk a little bit about the defensive side of things and how important it is to be defensively sound so that way you can spend more time in the offensive zone yeah, I think as a, as a centerman, it's uh, it's even more important to be good in all three zones of the rink. Um, I think I got one of the best players to learn from, and Jonathan Taze, to, to kind of push me and help me get better uh, as I get older. So it's it's been a process, but um, I feel confident in my play right now and what I'm doing uh, defensively and offensively. How big was it to get this win for Mark andre Fleury, too? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, we've left Flower out to dry a couple of times this year, and uh, he still comes to the rink with the same energy, smiling and happy, and, and it's good to get this one from him. It uh, means a lot to him. With well, the new coach, Kirby, what have been a couple of the things that maybe you've uh, learned about Derek King so far? Obviously still in the infancy of his, of his coaching uh, stature with the Chicago Blackhawks, but just maybe some things you've picked up on or maybe even some things you've learned so far uh, since he's been around. Yeah, King is a great guy. Um, he's really good at having a pulse on the game and understanding uh, when guys need to be in certain situations and against matchups, and um, he's honestly just telling us to go out there and, and play off our instincts, but get above the puck and, and track back hard. As soon as the, the puck gets turned over, there's a shot on net, and we don't have full control. Um, I think you can kind of see it in our play the last two games where guys are coming back hard through the neutral zone and uh, back checking a little bit more than we have in the past. One more, and we'll let you go. Just kind of pumping your teammates' tires even more. How big was Kelvin DeHaan today? Yeah, Hunter was great. Um, <laughs> takes a lot of guts to block that many shots. Uh, not a lot of guys can do it, so it's, a, it's a great to see him and all of our D-men. They had a great game today blocking shots, uh, keeping pucks to the outside, and letting fire make big saves. Kirby, thanks a lot. Best of luck, and congrats on the second straight win. All right, thank you. That's Kirby Doc joining us here on the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. Let's head to a break here on 720 WGN. It came on a night like any other with power unlike anything else on Earth. Using beyond advanced active ingredients like bicyclopyrone, Acuron GT post-emergence corn herbicide is here to annihilate tough weeds. Advanced technology, enhanced control. Talk to your Syngenta retailer about Acuron GT. Always read and follow label instructions. I'm no deck expert, but seeing is believing. Timber Tech presents another deck declaration. I'm Dave Mills. I'm a high school coach in San Antonio. And when it came time to add a deck, I wanted an alternative to wood that still looked like real wood. Timber Tech was easily the best choice. It looked so much like real wood, I did a double take at first. The color, the grain pattern, it's incredible. Plus, it's good for the environment. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but my deck, it's great. Timber Tech, go against the grain. Jake and Christine knew they needed help renovating their dream home. As a Pella advisor, I make sure every step of getting new windows and doors is smooth, including setting you up with our Pella Care Guarantee. It covers everything from product to installation with some of the strongest warranties in the industry. 
Right now, you can elevate the look of your home with special offers from Pella Indianapolis. Visit PellaIndianapolis.com slash radio to learn more. Your friends are hosting an online viewing party to watch a soccer match. But if your slow upload speeds were to make you sound like an evil robot... Pass the ball. Pass the ball. Whoa, who is that? I'm sorry. You're not an evil robot. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 25 times faster upload speeds and cable. Visit att.com slash 25 times faster. Limited availability in select areas. Based on internet 1000 wired upload connection speed versus major cable providers. One gig service with uploads of 35 megabits per second. Restrictions apply. Bundle your home and auto with Farmers and you could save up to 20%. One plus one equals 20. It's bundle math. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select Farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. That's for you. Answer the call from patients who need plasma. Donations are down, so give plasma at a Griffles Center and receive compensation. Visit GrifflesPlasma.com. Want to grab hold of some power? Real power? Then stop at Northern Tool and pick up a cordless Milwaukee power tool featuring best-in-class M12 or M18 fuel technology. So you can drill, cut, nail, or grind it like nobody's business. Milwaukee power tools really pack a punch and are built to get the job done, period. Visit our store or buy online and pick it up curbside. Northern Tool and Equipment. Quality tools for serious work. Hey, let's talk about diamonds. Selecting a diamond for an engagement ring is not an everyday experience. It's an important purchase, and at Shane Company, we make it informative and fun. And honestly, it's easy. Cut, color, clarity, and carat weight are important. They're your four C's. But here's the deal. At Shane Company, we won't just tell you our diamonds are more beautiful. We'll show you. Come in to compare a Shane Company diamond side-by-side with a non-Shane Company diamond in the same grade. You'll see for yourself that our diamond has more beauty and sparkle. You'll be blown away when you see that two diamonds in the exact same grade can look so different. Our diamond experts examine each diamond individually and hand-select each diamond for its beauty. Whether you're shopping in person or online, we have the same rigorous selection process for all the diamonds we sell. Visit us today. You'll have the confidence to pick the diamond that's perfect for you. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business. Shane Company and Shaneco.com. A 3-2 shootout winner for the Blackhawks as they take down the Pittsburgh Penguins. Boy, how did Brett Jackson, our engineer, know that this was Nick Holchek's favorite song growing up? <laughs> Ocean Avenue by Yellow Card. I'm Joe That's Brand. It. This is the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. You were just talking about that earlier uh, before the game started. You know, the sounds in the United Center, they travel. So that's, uh, <laughs> that was uh, some great listening and heck of a performance there by Yellow Card. Absolutely, as always, as always. Uh, Nick Olchek making his debut here on 720 WGM, but not his debut breaking down a hockey game. Uh, boy, kid, did you, uh, did you feel as comfortable as you sounded today? <laughs> to be honest, Joe, I'm going to repeat what I said in the open. Uh, I woke up, I received the call today. Uh, early in the morning to come and do the game, and I wasn't sure if I had woken up. I, I thought I was still dreaming, and this is a, an absolute dream come true. Um, I don't think I've had time to process it. I'm sure I'm going to go home, Joe, and I know our many great Blackhawk fans are going to hear this, and I wish I could tell you this just privately, but I'm probably going to go home and cry a little bit just because of the emotion of, of finally reaching the place that I've always aspired to get to. Um, but, you know, my life was made so easy tonight, the incredible... Blackhawks PR team getting me the stats that I needed and the incredible legendary play-by-play guy is sitting to my right, Johnny Weideman, who didn't just do a great job tonight but does a great job all the time. And, and of course, Troy Murray, too. I mean, the, the, the fact is that I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for him and, and him giving me his blessing. Um, but just an, an awesome night. Um, I don't think it's uh, copyright, but it was a tremendous night, Joe. And... Uh, Hopefully, uh, hopefully, be back doing it again soon. Hey, well, there's there's no shame in showing emotion and uh, being able to achieve something like this. And again, you you fit in like a glove. Um, I love the 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 homage you paid to Troy Murray too. A cool little uh, this day in Troy Murray history note that you had throughout the broadcast. You're uh, you're setting the standard. You're making me look bad. Normally, <laughs> I just give him a, a couple of shout outs, but. Uh, 
Hey, job well done. We know we're going to work with you for a few more games when the team is on the road, but uh, really had fun with you stepping in today. And uh, I don't feel like I'm worthy of saying this, but welcome to the NHL, kid. Oh, man. Joe, thanks so much. And, again, thank you to the entire Blackhawk organization for allowing me to be here. Awesome to spend the night with, with my dad, who's my idol, and I aim to make him proud every day. And hopefully tonight was another one of those nights. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nick Olchek, everybody. Great job today, and we'll talk to you down the road. Okay, buddy. Take care. All right. That's Nick Olchek, who was joined by John Weideman tonight as the Blackhawks took down the Pittsburgh Penguins, a 3-2 shootout winner. Blackhawks with back-to-back -back wins since the head coaching change, bringing in Derek King to replace Jeremy Colleton. We're taking this post-game show, uh, the Bitcoin of America post-game show, until 11 o'clock. So let's get to the scoring recap that showcase the Blackhawks scoring first after a well-fought first period despite no goals. It was the second straight game in which the Blackhawks got off to a good start. And they, then they got off to a pretty good start in the second period, too. And as we mentioned before, it was the second period, but it was the period of first because Jujar Kara found his first goal of the year. Moves the puck down to Kubalik along the left wing boards. He'll spin it behind the Penguin net tape. Put it down in front. Kara shoots and scores! Jujar Kara was in the perfect spot to take that pass from Jonathan Thames. He had a near empty net to shoot at. And he didn't miss for Jujar Kara. That's his first goal as a Hawk. And the Hawks take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, Taves did a really nice job winning the draw right to the right of Jari and then setting up Dominic Kubelik, who brought it back down to Taves. And then Taves very patiently wrapped the puck around the net, found a wide-open Kara just in front of the doorstep, and he slapped it through again. Kara's first goal of the year, Jonathan Taves with his eighth assist. Dominic Kubelik picks up his fourth assist of the year and breaks a three-game pointless streak. The Hawks then doubled their lead on another first goal of the year. Kane, right point, walks it to the deep slot, gave it to Jones, right circle, wrist shot, he scores! Seth Jones scoring his first Blackhawk goal on a perfect setup from Patrick Kane. You knew it was going to come sometime. Hey, why not tonight? It's 2-0 Hawks. If I peel back the curtain a little bit, we get to have a guest in the first and second intermission from the Hawks, and we get to throw out our preference of who we'd like to talk to. For the last couple of games, I've been bringing up the idea of Seth Jones, and John has always said, no. Let's not bug him. Let's wait till he gets that first goal. He's been tearing up the assist sheets, but his first goal of the season comes tonight. Again, John and Nick kind of talked it into existence. How about this? Seth Jones has the most, I take that back, the second most points by any defenseman in the NHL, only behind Adam Fox. His first goal, Kane with an assist on it, Alex Dabrinka with his fourth as well, Kirby Doc, who we got to talk to after the game as well, with a great screen on that goal as the Hawks went up 2 nothing through two periods. We went into the third period, and the Hawks did a good job of maintaining that lead until Jeff Carter. Taken there by Friedman, moves it down, they score! And in front of the Hawk net, it was Jeff Carter redirecting this one past Marc-Andre Fleury. Unfortunately for Fleury, no shutout here tonight, and it's 2-1 in favor of the Hawks. It was a pass from Jake Gensel who saw that traffic of Carter kind of tied up with Jones right in front of Marc-Andre Fleury. It goes off of Carter who was able to kind of muscle through with just one hand to get a stick on the puck. Carter's second goal on the season and then he picked up his third goal on the season. Into the Hawks zone, Gensel to Carter, he shoots and scores! Jeff Carter with a pair of goals here tonight has tied the score at two with 4.17 left in the third period. Yeah, so Pittsburgh was very resilient. That also came after a Mike Hardman breakaway that Jerry had a stop on. Pittsburgh came down a two-on-one with Gensel and Carter, and again, that duo teamed up as they tied up the game 2-2. It's the thir uh, 63rd multi-goal game of Jeff Carter's career. As Fleury, Fleury actually came sliding and reaching towards his left to try to make the stop, the goal post came off its bearing when he made that effort, and they actually had to go review it just in case to see if the puck slid underneath the goal, not the goal post, but the white part behind the red post. Uh, but probably the right call by the officials in the review team in the NHL, seeing that that puck did cross the goal line inside the post, even though the post wasn't in its normal spot. So we went to an overtime. What a wild overtime it was. The Blackhawks had a couple of opportunities. So did Pittsburgh, but the Blackhawks with maybe a little bit more quality. A 2-1-0 with Kane and Debrinkit. 
Couldn't capitalize as Kane went off the post after about four different passes between the two. Kane almost got the buzzer beater, too, as Seth Jones created a chance and tried to push it up to him. But uh, he shot wide as well. So we went to the first shootout of the regular season. First shootout, in fact, since the Blackhawks' preseason opener against Detroit. The Hawks chose to go first. Jonathan Taves started the scoring with a forehand backhand and then getting it through Jari's five-hole. Gensel was denied by Flurry with a glove save. And Patrick Kane couldn't make it a 2-0 shootout lead. Jari had a glove save on him. Chris Letang... Got a pad save from Marc-Andre Fleury, so it was left for Alex Dabrinkit. Three for ten in his career in the shootout, but he can win it here. Dabrinkit picks up the puck at center ice. Carries over the Penguin line, twisting down the slot for the win. Shoots, he scores! Hawks win! Hawks win! It took him to the shootout, but they beat the Pittsburgh Penguins here tonight. They win the shootout two to nothing. And they win the hockey game 3-2. to two. A jubilant John Weideman as the Blackhawks win their second straight game. First time they've done that this year. They improve to 3-9-2. and two. Pittsburgh goes to 4-3-4 and four after the Hawks win the shootout, a 3-2 final. We're going to take our last break as we uh, will hopefully hear from a few of the Blackhawks in the media and also head coach Derek King shortly. You're listening to the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show here on 720 WGN. That's for you. Answer the call from patients who need plasma. Donations are down, so give plasma at a Griffles Center and receive compensation. Visit grifflesplasma.com. I'm Adrienne Bankert, host of News Nation's brand new show, Morning in America. It's a morning show that's offering a fresh perspective on the day's stories. Wake up to something good. Morning in America, weekdays starting at 6 a.m. on News Nation. News Nation is redefining cable news. In its first year, News Nation was named both neutral in bias and most reliable and is now the fastest growing cable news network in the country. News Nation, news for all America. What's up, everybody? Nick Costos here for my friends at the Bed River Sportsbook. Whether you're a fan of pro or college football, Bed Rivers offers you great odds and special promotions for all the big games. And with hockey and hoops in action, Bed Rivers is bringing back the always popular live profit boosts for each sport. Log in and you'll receive a 20% live profit boost on Wednesdays for pro basketball and Fridays for pro hockey all season long. Must be 21 and located in Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. That's the sound of one of my favorite customers ever. His name's Jeremy. His dad Frank called me when it was time to replace their drafty old windows and to take advantage of our limited time sale. As a dedicated Pella advisor, I make getting new windows and doors simple. And when it comes to installation, nobody does it like Pella. Our local team can typically install in just a day. Right now, you can elevate the look of your home with special offers from Pella Indianapolis. Visit PellaIndianapolis.com radio to learn more. Bundle multiple policies for savings of up to 45% on your farmer's auto insurance. It's like a buffet without the regret. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Imagine a fast food rib sandwich. No, no, stop. Not that one. Please stop. Now instead, imagine a very real country-style rib sandwich. Mmm, smoked pork ribs, Gouda. Whoa, pretty freaky that you're somehow imagining the exact same rib sandwich Arby's has right now for a limited time. Hmm, imagine that. Arby's, we have the meat. At participating Arby's for a limited time. Fall is the season of gathering that brings us together with warmth and color. So whether it's a birthday, anniversary, or a special event, celebrate your friends and family with a gorgeous bouquet of roses from 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers makes it easy to brighten someone's day with 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99. To get 24 multicolored roses for just $39.99, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash audio. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash audio. A 3-2 winner for the Blackhawks tonight in the shootout. They take down the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm Joe Brand. This is the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. Seth Jones picked up his first goal as a Blackhawk this year. He led all skaters with 26 minutes and 53 seconds on the ice. Let's hear from number four. Better does just everything feel these last few days having a couple of wins? 
Yeah, winning makes everything better. Um, but it comes at a, you know, a, um, a price, and uh, that's hard work. And uh, I think we started doing the little things, as you can see in our game, in the defensive zone, blocking more shots, um, stopping in the defensive zone, winning more puck battles, um, to create battles in the neutral zone. And then, you know, once we're in the offensive zone, it's, you know, it's easy. You can be creative, but you have to put the work in the other two zones first. And I think that's what's making us successful these last couple of games. There were 31 minutes. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel fine. I feel fine. Um, you know, it's kind of weird minutes right now where we're not running six um, a lot. So, I'm, you know, me and Murph are double shifting quite a bit. So it's kind of different than, than what I'm used to. Um, but, you know, some, you, have to, you have to manage it in different ways. Sometimes you can take more offensive chances and, and uh, a lot of some of the minutes you have to really uh, tone it back and, and play more simple minutes. Can't and to bring it any grief. You spring them on a 2 on 0 and they don't score. <laughs> no, I, I'm, that's got to be the one out of 100 times that they don't score on a 2 on 0. So if it happens again, then maybe I'll say something. They had a lot of those days where you, you, know, you make a play on your own end and you, you always talk about how defense springs offense. Is today a good example of all those chances you yeah, really get? Yeah, I thought the defense did a great job. And then it's really up to that, you know, once, because, you know, they four checked pretty hard tonight. They come too hard. That third guy's close. Um, so we bypassed a lot with the rims. And then it's up to that winger, and the winger did a great job tonight of winning those battles, you know, just putting it behind. And then, you know, our center comes through, beats their guy, and we have two on ones and, and three on twos. So uh, I thought that, you know, our, our wingers did a great job tonight of that. Obviously, this has been there, but how does it feel getting that first goal? It feels nice. Um, I shot the puck a lot this year and uh, hasn't gone in. And, um, you know, I just told myself, keep shooting, keep shooting. And um, hopefully, one went in, and, and it did tonight. It was a great screen by Kirby. Um, take the goalie's eyes away and just try to throw it in there. Seth Jones did just keep shooting. Five shots tonight. That's second for all Blackhawks. And yeah, uh, 31 minutes, over 31 minutes for Seth Jones. I had an update of my box score since before. But Seth Jones, his first goal as a Blackhawk tonight as the Hawks beat Pittsburgh in the shootout 3-2. We're going to take a break and hear from Marc-Andre Fleury, the winning goaltender for the Hawks next here on the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show 720 WGN. ABC Tomorrow. Your favorite artists are back together for country music's biggest night. This is incredible. The CMA Awards with performances by country's biggest stars. Gabby Bear, Luke Combs, Keith Urban, Dan and Shea, Chris Stapleton, Mickey Guyton, featuring Britney Spencer and Madeline Edwards. Plus a special performance by Jennifer Hudson. Luke Bryan hosts the CMA Awards live tomorrow, 8, 7 central on ABC and stream next day on Hulu. We are back, and we are masked. Join me, Dean Richards, for my annual Tree Time Holiday Spectacular Sunday morning show broadcast. Get a 15% Dean's discount Sunday, November 14th, 9 to 1. Tree Time Christmas Creations in Lake Barrington. See WGNRadio.com slash events. What a catch by George Kittle! <laughs> hey, Niner fans. George Kittle here with a pro tip for making the best play on your eyewear. Visit Zinni.com, the official eyewear of the 49ers. Zinni has changed the game for you. Finally making prescription glasses affordable for everyone. At Zinni, you can find over 3,000 frames with unbelievable prices. Look for the Kittles collection so you can rock our styles every day too. So visit Z-E-N-N-I.com, start shopping from home using their virtual try-on, and change your eyewear game forever. Chicago Gateway Green has been greening and beautifying Chicago for the past 35 years. Gateway Green is the oak leaf signs on the expressways and 100 gardens covering over 160 acres of roadside landscape that provide cleaner air. Gateway Green has planted thousands of shrubs, perennials, and trees and removed more than 1.5 million pounds of litter from expressways. Help Gateway Green in its mission by becoming an expressway partner and showcase your company to hundreds of thousands of consumers every day. Visit chicagogatewaygreen.org. The BMO Harris Bank Magnificent Mile Lights Festival returns Saturday, November 20th. Kick off the holiday season with a day of free, family-friendly activities and an evening tree lighting parade on North Michigan Avenue. Visit WGNRadio.com or TheMagnificentMile.com. National Wreaths Across America Day is Saturday, December 18th. You can join in the mission to remember our fallen heroes, honor those who currently serve and their families, and teach younger generations about the value of freedom. A $15 donation to Wreaths Across America sponsors a fresh balsam remembrance wreath. These wreaths have become a symbol of America's respect for those who have served and no longer walk with us. Sponsor a wreath today. Visit www.wreathsacrossamerica.org. 
considering an online pharmacy? Explore BeSafeRx to find useful information and resources to help you purchase medicines safely online. A safe online pharmacy requires a doctor's prescription, has an address in the United States, has a licensed pharmacist, and is licensed by a state pharmacy board. It's best to stay away from online pharmacies that don't meet these criteria. Discover more helpful tips and resources at BeSafeRx. Go to FDA.gov slash BeSafeRx. Mom was always very organized. But my sister and I noticed she started to forget things. Telling my girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was hard. But Mom's early detection gave us time to make a plan. My sister and I were there for Mom and each other. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. For more information, visit alz.org slash time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. A 3-2 shootout winner for the Blackhawks tonight as they take down the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm Joe Brand. This is the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. Marc-Andre Fleury with 42 saves tonight against his former team, and he got redemption. Here's the goaltender. I had to feel a little better than the last time you saw these guys. Oh, jeez, yeah. I was, I was happy to uh, to get the nod and, you know, get a crack at them again. Um, you know, I was frustrating last time and embarrassing a bit for me, you know, to go back there and um, do so poor and, you know, I'm glad tonight went better and got a win. The team seems so much more structured with these last couple of games here. What, what's been different in your eyes? Uh, I think well, f- from my point of view, I think we're um, giving up last breakaways, two-on-ones or unmanned rushes, right? I think guys are making a big effort um, coming back and in the neutral zone, right? But the forwards coming back, pushing their their forward the puck and um, helping in the zone, right? Um, I, I think because of that, you know, we've given up less um, quality chances, you know, and um, definitely helps me and Lex. You've got a really good shootout record. It's the first time we've seen you have a senior shooter here. Do you? I mean, do you have a philosophy, or how do you? Why do you look so comfortable with behind your success there? Um, I don't know, just try to stop the puck, right? <laughs> um, I don't know, sometimes it's tough to like sing against Sol and Latang because I've known them, right? And I've done a bunch of breakaways with them and um, I just try to go with an open mind, right? Uh, not expect the usual or <laughs> what they like to do, you know, and just try to react to what they, they bring. And, um, and our guys, you know, got two goals, so that's always a, a big help for me. Pittsburgh scored two goals in that third period to tie things up, but Mark Andre Fleury with 18 saves in that third period as the Hawks hang on for a 3-2 shootout win. The Blackhawks' next game will be Friday when they host the Arizona Coyotes. Back in behind the net for Wheeler, out in front for Connor to the forehand way to shoot, score! Kyle Connor. The patience of Joe. That's unbelievable. It'll be the first matchup between the Hawks and the Yotes in quite some time. Arizona still with only one win this season. They're 1-10-1. Remember, it was them two, rather the Hawks and the Arizona Coyotes, the some of the last two teams fighting for that first win, and the Blackhawks now have won back-to-back games, have an opportunity to make it three straight to close out the homestand before the Hawks go on the road and take on the Seattle Kraken next week. Blackhawks Hockey has been sponsored by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, the card to carry through it all. Your locally owned Sitco, fueling good. Ditch Witch Midwest and Plumbers 911 Chicago. Visit plumbers911.com for emergency plumbing service. Big thanks to all the help back at the station, the intern Connor McKnight and Jimmy Nash, our producer today, doing a fantastic job. Brett Jackson turning the dials, getting us over the airwaves. Again, our next game will be on Friday when the Blackhawks host Arizona. It'll be a 7.30 puck drop, a 7 o'clock pregame. Next game preview is brought to you by Plumbers 911 Chicago. For all our help here at the United Center, Curtis Koch for getting tape. Paul Zerang, our sound engineer, Nick Olchek, filling in for Troy Murray. A fantastic job by him and our play-by-play man, John Weineman. For everyone I mentioned, I'm Joe Brand. This has been the Bitcoin of America Chicago Blackhawks postgame show. When we come back, David Jennings has the news, followed by Raleigh James. You've been listening to Blackhawks Hockey here on 720 WGN. 
You've been listening to Chicago Blackhawks Hockey on Blackhawks Radio, 720 WGN. Streaming on WGNRadio.com and smart devices everywhere. This is John Landecker. Earlier today, I had to assure Mayor Lightfoot that I have no plans whatsoever to move to Arlington Heights. I'm staying right here, Monday through Thursday, 7 to 10 on 720. A next star media group station. It's 46 degrees at 11 o'clock. Good evening. I'm David Jennings. The news sponsored by Joint Relief Institute. Chicago City Council's Latino Caucus is circulating a ward map proposal of their own. WGN traffic. Kennedy Express lanes in both directions are closed until 5 a.m. There is an accident on the outbound Kennedy. Three right lanes are blocked. That's uh, just before.